Hey guys, Carl Ryan 7 again. This time with a review of the 144 scale high grade Universal Century F91 Gundam from the F91 movie. And for colors, we're getting the usual ones. We have white for almost the entire mobile suit. Then we get a dark navy blue for the body. We have red highlights on the feet, the crotch here, and then the forehead jewel. And then moving on, we have gray, and this is as usual for the all Gundam project mobile suit and uh, this is kind of a cross between the normal plastic and the polycap plastic so it's somewhat soft so all the gray on here is that same soft material so even uh, the wings are kind of a softer plastic so even though it might not be well it might not sound perfect the joints so far seem to work extremely well even on my older ones and then moving on with the colors, oh yeah, of course we have red for the chin and we have not quite yellow, but more of an orangey yellow uh, for the V-fin. And so that's all for colors we're getting. Oh, maybe not, we get very nice clear green for the shield and for the beam saber blades. And unlike the Victory Gundams, this is actually, this is the same soft material that we're getting with uh, the normal beam saber blades. So, it's not just plastic, this is the softer plastic. So I kind of like that they did it because, well, uh, with the beam saber blades, I do prefer them kind of soft rather than just the brittleness, especially when you, of course, have those very tiny pegs at the bottom. And when you always have to remove them, put them back in, I'm afraid that, well, if this had been normal plastic, it would be very easy to break. So good job there. Putting it aside, and then we're gonna move on to the stickers. Unfortunately, they did not do a good job with the stickers. Just look at these four giant ones. Yes, this is hands down the worst part of this entire kit. Then again, saying that this is the worst part might also be kind of promising for the rest of the models. So, well, I've you can already see what's wrong here. It wraps around, and yes, these will actually tend to undo it themselves. Not nearly as bad as the old 1100 scale, but it will still unwrap itself a bit at these edges here. So why didn't they just make it separate? Why didn't they just make them separate plastic parts? We already have navy blue on the body, so why couldn't they just make these four things just separate parts? wouldn't be that hard of the price by 100 yen it's a cheap model kit anyway so why not put raise the price a bit and make them plastic parts but hey moving on with the other stickers fortunately things do get better here we have the f and the 91 and that's really cool because it's all it's also etched in the plastic so if you want to paint it you still have the outline to paint it on and of course since it is outlined on the model kit itself it's very easy to apply these stickers so good job there other stickers of course we have a lot of these yellow and black triangles we have them on the kneecaps on the shield there's another one on the active shield then they're at the bottom uh, with those thrusters and then, oh yeah also on the side skirts one on each side of course, we also have, as usual, the eye stickers. We get two of them because we also have a separate head. We have the normal Gundam head. And then this is actually a more human head because we have a nose going on. We have a beard, a mouth. Kind of freaky looking. I guess this is what they mean by the uncanny valley. Then, of course, we have, once again, as usual, we have one for the main camera, one for the back camera. And then, oh, there it goes, the F91. We also get two very nice shiny green ones for both the scopes. And let's forget all about your stickers because we're going to talk about the articulation. This is where things get a lot better. So the head, the usual stuff, goes up really nicely, downwards, rotates around, and of course has the usual chicken movement. It's on double ball joints. Then these shoulders here is actually where things get different from the normal, well, uh, the normal all Gundam Project model kits. This time the ball joint is on the model itself, so it doesn't have a hinge that goes forwards. That is this joint, but this time the hinge goes 
upwards. And unlike what you might expect, it actually still gives a really solid forwards movement, especially when you turn the arm around. So even without that extra hinge, still does a really good job. Of course, also rotates around. And then let's see where this hinge really comes into play. So this is all just the shoulder moving. And that gives us almost 90 degrees. So when we move the actual arm upwards, and then when we combine it with the waist movement, this model kit can replicate the final shooting of the original Gundam. I mean, we can put it even better like this. This is some really cool uh, engineering they got going on. So when they finally decide to re-release the original Gundam as part of this line, I really hope they don't forget about this shoulder design. They have to use it for the final shooting pose. I mean, that should just be the main selling point of that Bomber 44 scale, that it can replicate the final shooting pose. But we're talking about the F91 here, so let's go on. Rotates around bends the elbow at two joints goes up all the way hands on ball joints will wiggle around turn around and do everything a ball joint does waist articulation i've already kind of shown you guys that and it's on a double ball joint we've got one all the way at the bottom and then one a little higher at the waist so backwards really far until it decides to pop off and this is kind of the point where it stops bending backwards without popping off and that's really far and forwards of course also really nicely partly thanks to the design of the machine itself and just like the backwards bend goes forwards until it pops out and of course we'll also wiggle side to side a bit but not as much once again due to the design so it's a double-edged sword. Rotates around all the way without being hindered at all by the side skirts. And then the legs, front skirts, as always, mold together but can be separated. Go forwards really nicely. Go up all the way, so that's really far. Backwards, not quite as much, but that's still pretty impressive. So we can't complain too much. Side skirts go up. And then the legs go out really far so it can do a split and a grande car so those legs have some really sweet articulation going on we'll rotate around and then oh yeah got a swivel joint going on here so you can give the legs slightly more backwards movement but not a lot as you can see, this is about the difference that you will get going backwards. So just that tiny edge, but hey, every little bit helps. And then bends at the knee at two joints. Once again, fantastic bend going on there. Feet go down. They're on a hinge at the top and then a ball joint at the bottom. So really nicely, goes nicely forwards side to side a lot so that's of course to support that very far out was moving so that's about as far as you're gonna get with those feet still being believable then we'll of course go side to side as well and that's all for articulation and of course we've got uh, the foot guard that just got disconnected it seems no wait it's a bit there we go so that's actually connected at the back here with a ball joint and as you can see it can get loose when you move it around a bit too much so that goes up and down as well then when we look at the back we also have these thrusters which go out like this and well this one you kind of got a position there's no real a locking mechanism where they only go up a certain way. Well, the top two, these can't go foot upwards, so they're locked into place, but this bottom one can go anywhere at once. So it's kind of weird that they made it so that the top two can be positioned correctly, but the bottom one you kind of, well, you gotta try it out for yourself. Now, while we're looking at the back, 
let's immediately head over to the accessories and let's start off with those two VSBRs because they have a lot of articulation going on actually. They go in and out and then it will also rotate around so that immediately gives them a very large movement range. And then you simply slide to the front. This here slides out to reveal some nice inner workings and very nicely detailed. The trigger slides out. So this is kind of an ironic thing going on. The inside and everything is really well done, but then those stickers are just atrocious. And of course, what you do is you just pop out the hand, open it up, and you can probably already tell that that's a very thin handle, so of course the hand is going to be loose in there, but that's not really an issue because, well, the VSBR is on that track, so it's not going to flail around or do anything. And you just got to connect this back here. And then you can just put it in any pose you like. As, as I said, we have some really good articulation going on and this will allow for some very dynamic pose with those VSBR. So that is extremely well done. So that's some really great engineering going on with those VSBRs. And I gotta say, I am really, really happy with the way these are now, just how articulate they are. I genuinely wasn't expecting this until I built it, so that's really well done. And it's just a lot of fun to pose them around. It's not a hassle, you just slide them out, pop in the hand, and yeah, just pose them. And the hand, that's another thing I was going to be worried about, that the hand was going to be popping out all the time, but it actually all works really, really well. And then let's have a look at the other accessories one I've already shown you, the beam rifle here, and this is where one unfortunate thing happens. There's a handle here, doesn't move at all. Why? I mean, when you just look at the parts that go in there, how difficult would it have been to have a peg going there and a peg the other side and just have it move around? Why would that have been so difficult? That's just weird. I mean, I don't get it why they just didn't give us a movable handle. That's just an oddity of design. The good thing, of course, is it fits in the hand absolutely perfectly. You won't find a snugger fit than that. It just slides in there and is absolutely perfect. Then we also get a left trigger finger hand. And this is what I always adore about model kits that do this give us two trigger finger hands. So much more model kits to do that. Actually, no, this should just be a standard feature. So we just slide this in there and we just get the same fantastic snug fit of the beam rifle. Put this back on there. Got some great movement going on with that handle. So the big problem, of course, is this design isn't really made for the F91. We got a pretty big shoulder and then Immediately where it should go on the shoulder, they put an ammo pack. So let's put this back to the back and then we put on the bazooka. And thanks to that fantastic handle, he can hold the bazooka. And you can even put it a bit further backwards. So, like I said, they did a fantastic job with the bazooka. If you want to hold it underneath the arm, that also works. Or let's say you don't want to use the bazooka, you want to store it on the back and you're going to go with the VSBRs. Well, get them out of the way. We have a panel here that you can remove. Then you grab this part here. You put the panel on, let's see how it was supposed to go like this, put the panel on there, and then you slide the bazooka on there. You have a peg here, which is really kind of hidden there. It just looks like a mechanical detail on a bazooka, so that's a very well hidden peg. I mean, they even gave it some detail to 
just make it look like it's a part of a bazooka. It doesn't stand out there like, oh, that's a peg to connect it to the backpack. So once again, really well done. Just put it on there and then you just put it on there. Uh, preferably without the hand. Then turning it around again and let's have a look at the final weapon we're getting. Two very nice beam sabers and of course we're also getting two beam saber blades with them and these are actually somewhat longer than the regular ones we're getting. So these are not the master grades but they're slightly longer than high grades and their tips are actually the same. So if for some reason uh, you'd want to use a regular one that's somewhat shorter they'll fit or the other way around if you want to give one of your other high grades a longer beam saber these will also fit in those so let's just give it there we go unfortunately unlike the beam rifle and the beam launcher which is a bazooka the fit isn't all that snug here as you can see it's very very kind of loose. The good news is it doesn't just straight out fall out. So I guess that's... Never mind. I guess they do just straight out fall out. So yeah, kind of weird. They did it absolutely perfectly with the beam rifle and the beam launcher, but somehow they couldn't get the beam sabers right. And this seems to kind of be a recurring thing going on. Are we going back to those dark days where Zakus couldn't even hold their own heat hawks? Well, looks like it. Also, uh, these unfortunately do not store anywhere on the mobile suit. I guess it would have been a hassle to get them to fit on here because you know these things have to come out, turn around, and well, probably would have been a technological nightmare to get that to work and work well. So in this case, I can kind of forgive them though I wonder how difficult it would have been, but hey, we can forgive that thing. So that's all for the weapons, and let's get with this absolutely gorgeous looking beam shield. Well, at least the beam shield looks gorgeous, because when we look at the mechanical detail... Well, for starters, we seem to have somewhat hollowed out parts, but yeah that can be forgiven because it's not too extreme but the big problem here is why not just mold this in gray that's gray on the machine so yeah just seems a bit unfortunate because you know white just doesn't look all that mechanical and we just easily remove this and the good news is it can go up and down a bit whoops stay in there stay in there so, as I was saying, it can arc down in order to evade those fins that are going on with the shoulders. However, it seems like they forgot one of the most important lessons that the Silhouette Formula F91 models taught them. Have this beam shield turn around in order to evade large shoulder designs. So, it seems a bit... Odd that they forgot their own lesson. They did perfectly with silhouette formulas, but they make the same mistake once again. And then when you turn around the entire arm, you can't put it in perfectly. But it just seems weird that they just didn't do it like they did with the silhouette formulas. They did it before, guess they forgot about it. Am I really the only one who remembers those model kits? But moving on, uh, overall, it's a pretty nice thing. And talking about those fins, if you don't want them, you also get these uh, collapsed versions of them. You can see that you have them tiny fins that are sticking out, so you just pop these out and pop the other ones in. I also think that these fins are facing downwards a bit too much. They should be more upwards, but it kind of depends on what illustration you're looking at. In some illustrations, it looks exactly like this, where others and I think the most of them have these fins much higher up there and that does look better in my opinion so I was a bit bummed out by this but hey it is only a minor thing and then the final accessory we're getting I've already shown it it's the different face uncanny valley going on here and 
the really good thing is that they did a very good job with how you have to change it out. So the entire hat kind of comes off. And the good thing is it's the exact right amount of friction going on. It's on there tight enough to not just randomly fly off, but it's plenty loose enough to very easily remove. And one thing I really like is it's kind of like um, when you push it all the way down, it has a more modern look. And when you extend it, it has a more retro look. So we're getting four for the prize or two. And that's all for the accessories we're getting. And I got one final thing I should point out is this hole here is of course compatible with the action basis. As always, the inevitable question is, do you want to buy this? And for 1,200 yen, this is an absolute yes. Articulation is absolutely fantastic. We're getting a lot of accessories, beam rifle, beam launcher, gorgeous beam shield. We get the beam servers, even though they're not that great, but hey, uh, we have the VSBRs on the back. So that is a lot of play value there. And when you take into account that the flaws it does have are rather minor. I mean, the stickers are annoying, but you can always paint them. Um, same goes for uh, the gray, well, the white part that should be gray on the shield that can also be painted. So if you're willing to do a, if you're willing to put a bit of work in this model kit, it's going to look fantastic and for a great price to boot. The only real annoyance I have that can't be fixed that easily are these fins that stick out the radiator fins here. It would have been cooler if they were, like I said, a bit more upwards, but yeah, we're just gonna have to deal with that. So if you can get over the fins, this is just a plain fantastic machine for once again 1,200 yen. And that's a really, really low price, price considering all we're getting. So now let's get on with a few size comparisons and this is of course a model kit from the old Gundam project so let's compare it with a few of the other ones and yes it's in scale with these two you might think that that's a good thing no that means that this is actually out of scale with every single 144 scale ever released so yes, um, I guess we should be happy that it's at least in scale with the other out of scale, small out of scale models, because you know the Victory Two should be slightly bigger than the F ninety one, though it seems like it's a bit too small than compared to the V two. Regardless, let's compare it to a one hundred forty four scale, an actual one hundred forty four scale. The Gundam and the Jim Custom. And you might think, well, the F91 is supposed to be a small machine and it is smaller than the Gundam. Well, let's put it next to the Tomliad, and these two should be about the same size. The Tomliad is 50 meters, the F91 15.2 meters. Yes, at this point, you might wonder why still bother putting 144 scale on the box if this machine is obviously not 144 scale. And you might think that this guy got it wrong because this is the older model, but no, the Tom Liat nailed it. Do it a millimeter. This model kit, I measured it, did the math, and it's actually, well, take a guess. What scale do you think this is? It's supposed to be a 144 scale. Could it be 1140 scale? I mean, that's within the margin of error, no. One one hundred thirty second scale. One one hundred thirty second scale. That is, I mean, like I said, why still bother putting the scale on there? Just say that this is one from the All Gundam Project, um, and that you simply do not care about scale anymore. I mean, yeah, the scale is supposed to be accurate on the box, right? But yeah, actually, kind of ending this review of a great model kit on a downer due to scale. But yeah, it's, it's just plain annoying when you want to put your model kits next to each other and they're just plain out of scale. It's kind of bothering actually when you have them put next together and yeah, they're supposed to be the same size even though they're not. But hey, let's do the final size comparison next to the 1100 scale F91. And you can say anything you want about the old F91, but at the very least, just like the Tom Liat, 
this thing was accurate in scale up to the millimeter. <sighs> like I said, why still bother? At least it still isn't as big as the Zocker 3. I mean, that would have been absolutely horrendous. But yeah, as you can see, it's still a rather small machine. Well, that's all for this review, and see you guys next time.